Hello? Hi. Are we on? Oh, is this where I don't know what I did. <laughs> we are back. Back with you. Back again. Tell your crew. Guess who's back? Back again. We're a little fuzzy. Nisha's back. Well, it doesn't surprise me. <laughs> Maybe we're, it'll get better in a second. We're trying to do this with our Hughes net, and so far I've been wholly unimpressed. So if you work for HughesNet and you yeah. think you can help us. <laughs> yeah, please reach out. So <coughs> for the next hour, Nurse Nisha and I are going to be answering your questions about low-carb, keto, ketovore, carnivore, fasting, uh, general medicine, general nutrition, any questions you have along that line. That's what we're here for. And we're going to spend the next hour answering every single question we can. Uh, tell us in the comments where you're watching from, what city, what state, what country. I see Seattle and Buffalo, New York. Yeah, okay, sounds good, but we're fuzzy. That's good because I didn't have time for, to put makeup. I'm a little shiny. <laughs> you are a little shiny. Here, yeah. let me. There you go. A Starlink. Now, I've had several people tell me about Starlink. We'd never heard of it before. I don't think it's available here. It probably isn't. I'll check, though. Definitely check. Fort yeah. Wayne, Indiana, Arkansas, Franklin, Tennessee. Hello, neighbor. Milan, Tennessee, another neighbor. I love it. I love it. If you've got a friend who's been thinking about keto, carnivore, low-carb, fasting, intermittent fasting, now's the time to tag them in the comments, or you can click the share button and say, hey, they're on. Watch them. Send them a text message right now. Send an email. Nisha just emailed my dad so that my grandmother – and watch this from Alabama. Should I close the windows? <laughs> They're all closed except for the kitchen. I'll close yeah, it. go close that so we don't have traffic noise. We're kind of close to the road. Hey, Georgia, Washington State, Bullhead City, Arizona. Now, that's how you name a city. Bullhead, Bullhead. City. Bullhead? Bullhead City. Nice. I love it. Canada is in the house. All right. Okay, guys. Let's. You want to touch the screen, didn't you? Because that'd be very convenient if you. I'm could. just used to being on your computer. It's not really. Convenient. She thinks touch screens are dumb, but no, she I just don't. tried I to just use don't it. Care. Hey Tammy, how's it going? Hey Janet. Hey Sharon. Hey Mac. Hey Muriel. Cynthia. Kelly. Crystal. Guys, now's the time to get your questions answered. Uh, I've got a new YouTube video that I'm going to be posting tomorrow called "Reverse Type Two Diabetes in Five Easy Steps." And it's just that easy. You can do it without any products, any pills, any injections. And watch my YouTube channel tomorrow. I'll post a, a notification on all my social media. Tell your granny hi because she's watching. Is granny watching? Yes. Hey, granny. Hey, Barry. How you doing? <laughs> I think Beckett may say hi at, towards the end of this, granny. Right. So stick around to the end. You'll get to see Beckett Barry. He might blow you a kiss. All right. You ready for some I'm ready. Questions? Let's go. Question number one from Sal. Is it okay to do a weekly cheat day on keto? I don't think it's dangerous or bad, but you're going to slow down your progress, Sal. Uh, you're basically uh, shooting one-seventh of your week in the head when you have a cheat day. What if you could just have a cheat meal or once a week? Food, like so, one yep. thing. Just one thing, yeah. If you if you really got to have a cheat, which I think eventually you won't, you'll no longer think you need that. But what if you had a cheat food once a week? That way you are you don't feel deprived of whatever it is you want to cheat with. But just remember, you're not cheating me or Nisha. You're cheating yourself. Yeah, we don't really promote cheating because it doesn't really benefit you in any way. That's better. Um, and it, it most of the time leads down a very dangerous yeah. road of... Uh, yeah. today's my cheat day. Yeah. Oh, tomorrow's also a cheat day. Well, I'll just cheat one more day and it doesn't yeah. actually benefit yeah. what we're promoting, which is health optimization and getting away from these habits of eating these bad foods. Yeah. And you got to know you, Sal, if you're the type of person that can just eat a cheat food once a week and leave it at that, then I, it's probably not a big deal. But if you're like me, the cheat food becomes a cheat meal, becomes a cheat day, becomes a cheat month. And then I just, screwed myself out of a month of good health so just know you alicia says how important is it to track macros i think it is probably pretty darn important when you first start doing this now if you're gonna go carnivore which is meat and eggs uh, butter uh, full fat real cheese 
only, then you don't really have to count macros because you're eating fat and protein. And whether you eat high protein, moderate fat or high fat, moderate protein, I don't really care because you're going to you're going to receive a ton of health benefits doing that. But I don't think tracking long term is helpful unless you just like to track. Uh, Ms. Cheryl says, this is my second week uh, alternate day fasting. I had my thyroid removed seven years ago. Are there any additional protocols I should follow or issues I should look for? Nope. Uh, do as much intermittent fasting as you're comfortable with. And when you break your fast, eat real food. That is the one and only protocol needed for all human beings on the planet. Marianne has a question about reversing type one diabetes that was caused from autoimmune uh, from steroid given with chemo cancer treatment? Maybe, but probably not. The reversal for type one diabetes is probably going to come when we perfect the ability to inject stem cells into your pancreas, which will then differentiate into new beta cells. That's probably how the technology is going to reverse type one diabetes. But in the meantime, as a type one diabetic, using keto or carnivore, you can absolutely do several things. First of all, save a ton of money on insulin because you're going to need about 80 or 90% less. Number two, have a normal hemoglobin A1C, which most type 1 diabetics only dream of and never actually attain eating the way the American Diabetes Association tells them to eat. And thirdly, you're going to reap tons of health benefits because you're not going to have all of the grievous uh, side effects and complications of long-term type 1 diabetes that's out of control. But uh, I doubt that you're going to be able to reverse type 1 diabetes with diet alone. Um, Dell says, I mostly eat steaks, but I drown them in Frank's red hot sauce, which has no sugar or carbs in it. How bad is that for is me? Is Frank's really zero carb? It's zero, zero carb. Zero carb. How's that possible? Because it's wow. just hot sauce. Wow. But yeah, I mean, if you're as long as you're counting total carbohydrates, I don't really care what condiment you put on your meat. My favorite is just cheap zero carb mustard. I love mustard. I think you could put mustard on a dog turd and I would eat a bite or two. That's disgusting. Well, I might. But um, sauces are a great way for me to stay meat heavy because without sauces and there's a bunch of keto sauces, you can make your own sauces. There's carnivore sauces. There's all types of ways to make your own zero carb, low, low, low carb, yep. keto sauces. For a lot of people, just meat is boring. That yep. is me. Yeah. Well, it's kind of me too. I always like some salt and pepper and some spices. Yeah. I'm uh, not hardcore. I can't. Another great one is to just it. melt some butter and then put like a Montreal steak seasoning, like the, you know, the sprinkle stuff and mix that up in the butter good. That's really a good condiment. Zero carb, high in fat. Somebody said, what sauces do you eat? I make my own ranch, my own buffalo sauce, um, my own salad dressing, which has bacon grease in it. Uh, mustard, we use yeah. our bacon mayonnaise. Yeah. Always read the ingredients if you buy it, even mustard, because some, some of those buttholes will put sugar in it. And then Primal Kitchen has really good steak seasoning. I like it too. Yep. But count the carbs and read the labels. All right. Hey, Adam, can I take an electrolyte supplement when on a potassium sparing blood pressure medicine like lisinopril? Yeah. So uh, lisinopril is not really a potassium sparing medicine. It's probably the second ingredient. You're probably on lisinopril slash something else. Uh, but if you're on any kind of potassium sparing diuretic, you need to talk to your doctor before you get froggy with the electrolytes. Kyle, what is your opinion on reversing or on reverse dieting under keto carnivore? And do you have any experience, anecdotal research on this? Yeah, I consider a very, very low carbohydrate diet, such as keto, ketovore, carnivore to be the proper human diet. So I don't think you have to play any reindeer games with that. When you're hungry, you eat proper human food. And when you're not eating, you don't snack and you fast. And that's, that's how we've always done it since we arrived on this planet. And that's how we should always do it. So uh, I've looked into reverse dieting. I don't, I don't think it's a big deal. Okay. It's not worth the effort. So just eat meat, eat, eat a proper human diet. And then when you're not eating fast. Rachel has a really good question. Um, just curious. 
curious why meat aversions would be so common in early pregnancy. Does that mean the body is needing more carbs and other things instead during this time period? We talked about this a lot because in my first trimester, I had extreme meat aversion. So yeah, what do you think? I don't think anybody knows for sure, Rachel. Uh, there are many theories out there. One is that you might need more carbohydrates, but then when you start thinking about the physiology uh, of this, of the, 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 the pregnancy thing, your body makes all the glucose you need. If you if you need glucose, if your baby needs glucose before their liver's up and functioning and can make glucose, your liver's got that. It can do that. So I don't really think it's that you need uh, uh, carbohydrates. I think that it's another reason. Also, if that were the case, that you needed carbohydrates, then every single woman would have a meat aversion in the first trimester. So because all women would need carbs if some women do, right? So I don't think that's what it is, but I think more research is being and does need to be done in this area. Um, Nisha was able to get around this by, it basically it was odiferous meat. No, it was well, sight, I mean, smell, texture, everything. Right, but I'm saying if it, like some things, like you could eat chicken breast and you could eat eggs. And so you could still get great sources of fat and protein, yeah. but it just like, if I were going to cook a steak, Screw meat. Mm -mm, no. no, I couldn't do that. Had to go outside. No, and no, I couldn't eat chicken breast for a while. The tech, like the way that it looked just bothered me. I don't know. It was, it, so weird. It was bad. Yeah. Somebody please <clears throat> figure that one out. I want to know the but answer. And I also drank keto chow protein shakes because we were traveling basically my entire pregnancy, especially my early early trimester weeks and keto chow was everywhere we went and they would took such good care of me. They would bring me water with electrolytes in it. They would bring me keto chow shakes so I could get my protein in like and, took, fat. Yep. and my fat. They took really good care of me and that helped a lot because I wanted something sweet, which keto chow has got sweetener in it, but then it also had protein. So I wasn't just eating strawberries, which is what I basically lived off of in my first trimester. Okay. Yes, we know we're blurry. Uh, do you think Andrew wants to know non-breaded fried chicken and lard, low carb Southern culture? I think, I think if you fry any meat in lard and don't bread it, that's part of a proper human diet. Yes. hundred percent. I, you can fry chicken, uh, skunk, possum, rattlesnake, frog legs in lard, unbreaded. You don't want to use the breading of course, but I look, this is how in the South you have to bread and fry everything. Right. I can remember at the old farmhouse, I had some chicken legs and I was like, I don't want to, I don't want to bake them. I want them fried, but I don't, I don't want to bread them. And I just thought, what the hell, I'm just going to put them in the fried eddy. And I did. And they're freaking awesome. And I was like, you don't have to bread chicken to fry it. OMG. Is that really the first time you'd had naked wings? Well, I mean, that I had made. Oh, you know okay. what I'm saying? And I like, it I never would, occurred to you to But do I, it I still figured naked wings at the restaurant, they magically did something. I was like, <laughs> yeah. But I just, I just literally put them in the lard and they fried and I took I them out. I like them. them better that way. Mm, the me too. Yeah. honestly takes away from the flavor. And yep. if you do it in the air fryer or the deep fryer, it doesn't matter. Toss them in bacon grease and then add your seasoning on top. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. Absolutely. So good. Dapper Dave says, as a diabetic, what is considered dangerously low morning blood sugars while fasting? I've gotten as low as 55. I'm not sure if I should stop fasting with numbers like that. So as long as you <laughs> feel fine at, with a 55. And so 55 is my, that's my rock bottom limit. Uh, 60, we, we kind of fudged on that as in the medical profession because we didn't want people to have hypoglycemia because it it would be very dangerous. And so we kind of set that number artificially at 60. But I know many people on keto carnivore who their morning blood sugar, after they let the dawn effect go away, they will have a 55, 58, 57, and they, they, they feel great and, they, and everything's fine. Now, if you're having symptoms of low blood sugar, nausea, sweating, uh, foggy thinking, then you might need to take a small bite of something with some carbs to get your blood sugar up. But if you're not having any symptoms of low uh, blood sugar, congratulations. Your A1C is going down very quickly. Uh, Brian says, are there any problems if you've had part of your colon removed like eating this way? No, absolutely not. Uh, the colon does very little in the way of actually digesting food. It acts as a conduit for waste, and it also uh, pulls water out of the waste so that you have a firm, solid 
stool instead of runny liquidy stool. And so all of the meat that you're going to eat, Brian, on a proper human diet is digested before it makes it halfway through the small intestine. Meat as a solid form never makes it to the large intestine. That's a myth that you hear out there a lot, but it's absolutely not true. Meat is gone before it ever gets to the large intestine. Hey, John Kaufman. Oh, John Kaufman. Uh, Rich says, I have lost 50 pounds since September 1 on carnivore. <laughs> Whiting gown. I feel great. My heart rate is noticeably lower. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely, Rich. Good you're job, you're Rich. doing it. Now it's time for you to teach your friends and family how to do what you did because I'm sure they have questions. Uh, Vero Gloria, can stevia be inflammatory? It's a good question. Uh, for everything related to human physiology, there's a bell curve, okay? There are people on this end of the curve that would have no effect whatsoever from stevia. Uh, there are people on this side of the curve that might notice that stevia causes inflammation. And I think that's true of, of certain vegetables, certain fruits, certain uh, maybe even certain meats that some of us are like, oh, I can't eat that, but the rest of us can. And so it is possible that stevia could be inflammatory to some people, but many people seem to be able to use it with no inflammatory response at all. Ash said, I made your meatloaf today and it was delicious. So freaking Lucky good. Lucky you. I wish I had my I wish, meatloaf Yeah, today. I wish you'd made your meatloaf today. Well, you know, we're getting settled. Mm, all right. Yeah. We just got our pots in today. I'm so excited. Now you can make meatloaf. They're so cute. Yeah. Uh, yeah, meatloaf. Very same. Whoops. Oh, my gosh. Uh, okay, Suzanne, I've been doing keto with my husband and I just bought a blood pressure cuff for him. His blood pressure was 182 over 106. What is your advice on okay. this? Okay, so here, this is a great question because a lot of people think that one blood pressure reading is the end all be all. That's just that. So, and I'm not saying you, Susan, but a lot of people would think, well, his blood pressure is 180 over 100 all the time. Well, maybe, maybe not. So, what you need to do is sit him down, let him relax because you probably called him in from outside and he was in the middle of doing something and he was pissed off and, and you made him check his blood pressure because you got your new cuff. He needs to sit quietly in a dark room, quiet, relaxed for 20 minutes and then check his blood pressure. If it's still 182 over 106, then you need to call tomorrow and get an appointment for him with his doctor as he is transitioning to a proper human diet. Uh, uh, but many, many cases, a lot of times if you go into a doctor's office and they check your blood pressure one time after you've waited and they're late and it's high, they try to put you on a pill. That's completely inappropriate and improper. It's not good medicine and it's just not the way it, it is done. 20 minutes, quiet, restful, meditative, then check the blood pressure. That's actually a real blood pressure measurement. Metal God says, my sister was told by an ER doctor that she's allergic to salt. Is this possible? And why would they say that? Yeah, that's that's dumb, Metal God. Not you, but what the doctor said. Uh, no human being on the planet can be allergic to water or salt or iodine. All of these things are essential for human survival. If I were to reach inside your sister's body and pull out all the salt, she would be dead in a few seconds. And so that uh, ER doctors, sometimes they're busy and they, they don't have time to explain. And so they just say whatever. But this is obviously a very dumb thing for an ER doctor to say. No, she's she's not. Uh, someone said, what are you drinking? Water. It is always water. Always. Literally always water. Yeah, it's at 6 p.m. It's always water. Back in the day, sometimes it was coffee because I'm crazy. All right. Cynthia, I've been keto carnivore for two years. I've lost 45 pounds. My blood sugars go up to 190 after eating and having doing, uh, done intermittent fasting. If your blood sugars are going up that high after eating, uh, it may very, very well be likely that you're eating too many carbohydrates for your personal physiology. And that's another thing that there's a bell curve on. Some of us can eat 100 total grams a day and our blood sugar is great and we do great. Others of us have to, like me, I have to eat less than 20 total grams a day, way less, to keep my blood sugar, my A1C, and keep my, my belly where I want it to be. And so, Jessica, I would go back and look at your diet with fresh eyes, maybe download Carb Manager or Chronometer again and, and figure out how many total grams of carbs are you eating in that meal. That'll probably answer your question. Jessica Andrews. 
Didn't I just, there was a country music singer. Jessica singer. Andrews. That singer? sounds familiar. Yeah. This is from, okay. Anyways, I've had hypo thigh for nine years. Should I get a metabolic panel? I do keto and intermittent fasting. And I take Synthroid. Uh, you absolutely need a metabolic panel at least. Did she didn't say how old she was? Uh -uh. At least twice a year, if not more often. Uh, <clears throat> anybody who's getting any routine prescription from their doctor needs a, not a basic metabolic panel, but a complete metabolic panel at least every six months because any prescription medication can mess with your electrolytes. It can mess with your kidneys. It can mess with your liver. And so a complete metabolic panel, a CMP, twice a year. That way we can keep an eye on your organs and your electrolytes. Ant, is cheese good on carnivore? What do you think about that? Well, it depends. Remember the bell curve I talked about earlier? Uh, I think if you're going to eat cheese, goat cheese is the best because as humans, we tend to digest those better and most of us aren't as sensitive to it. But there are some of us who can eat cow's cheese and do really well. And there's some of us who can't eat any cheese because we are... Special snowflakes yeah. who have a yeah. genetic ab abnormality that causes us to be inflamed when we eat the delicious yeah. cheese. Some people get inflamed. And for some people, eating cheese, even really good quality cheese, will cause a more of an insulin elevation in them than it does in other people. And, and stalls. Yeah, it'll slow down their weight loss. And once they try a month with no cheese, they're like, oh, Okay, there you go. So like for me, cheese has to be an occasional treat. If I eat cheese every day, which I totally would do if I could, I would have a little Dunlap. Think they know what that is? I, well, I don't know. Tell them what a Dunlap is. <clears throat> I don't know how to explain that. Dunlap is when your belly Dunlapped over your belt. I would have that again like I used to have if I eat too much cheese too often. And although I love it, what I love even more is having a flat belly. I used to have done one too. <laughs> and I don't think that applies to everyone. Mm. Some of you guys will be able to eat real good quality cheese and do great. Others will have to tighten it up and go to goat and sheep cheese. Others will just have to have cheese as an occasional. You said sheep cheese, not cheap yeah, cheese. Yeah, sheep. For the record. Sheep. Sheep. O ovine cheese. Maggie, how do I know if I can stop, stop taking leave with our rocks in? You'll talk with your doctor before you stop any prescription medication, <clears throat> but uh, you'll also discuss this with your doctor as a partner, not as your doctor being your boss. And you'll get a full thyroid panel like Nisha and I have talked about on many videos. You talk about the full panel on your Hashimoto's videos on your channel, don't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so get the full list and it's quite likely your doctor is not checking a complete thyroid panel on you. And by only when you're checking the full panel, will you know if you can decrease or <clears throat> maybe stop your levothyroxine? If you even can. And if you can't, it's fine. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, because most people can lower the dose by eating a proper human diet. And I consider that a victory. I don't think you have to stop your thyroid medicine completely to consider your proper human and diet. And people get really hung up on saying, I don't have to take yeah. any meds. And yeah. that's, that you know, that's yeah. not for every person, it's not possible to get off every single med. Some and of us need to be on medication. Thyroid uh, medicines like levothyroxine, and I'd rather you be on Synthro or uh, Armor or Nature, WP, NP, because they're more natural. But don't think of that as a medication. That is a hormone replacement therapy because your, your thyroid is not making enough thyroid hormone. So don't think of it as just a pill that you're having to take. That's actually hormone replacement for your thyroid. So I, I think thyroid medication is different than like if you're on a yeah. blood pressure. I just or, feel like people put medication all in the bad basket. And right, then just right. like anything, there's medications that are great yep. and, and we're lucky as human beings to have them at our disposal. And then there's some that are, um, how would you say? Unnecessary. Como se dice? Uh, rip off. Yeah. And some are rip off. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. All right. Bri Bria says, how much do you feed Beckett in a day amount? He as much as he wants. What he wants, when yeah. he wants, as much as he yeah. wants. Uh, infants and toddlers haven't been programmed by television and magazine articles. They don't know, oh, I should eat three square meals a day. I should eat three meals of snacks. They, oh, I should eat a palm size. They don't, they've, they haven't heard any of that foolishness yet. 
So they actually let their appetite be their guide. And, and sometimes this freaks parents out. And so if Beckett wants bacon and sausage and eggs, he gets it. If he wants some booby milk, he gets it. And when he's hungry, he, he eats. When he's not hungry, he goes and plays. And we all, so we offer him food. Mm -hmm. And if he says, no. Nope. That's how he says it. Just like nope. that. Do it again. No. Nope. That's then a, that's he fine. goes and he plays. He and goes then and plays. He, if he's hungry, he'll take it out of my hand mm -hmm. and he'll eat it. So. That's right. And when he's thirsty, he does the same thing. If he wants water, he will tell us that he wants water. But if he doesn't want water, when we offer it, he says, no. That's exactly <laughs> what he says. Yeah. Now, no. when kids get a little older, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, sometimes they'll freak parents out because they're, they won't eat all day. And a lot of parents think, oh, my God, they're going to not grow. They're going to not develop again. I would, unless it, it it is, you know, an overweight 10 year old who's like, oh, I don't want to eat. I'm trying to lose weight. That's no. Then we're going to have a discussion about the proper human diet. But if your kid's just busy playing and doesn't want to eat, that probably means it's not time for them to eat. You shouldn't force them. Um, LD says, what can be done for <coughs> pulsatile ten tinnitus from a slap to the ear? Yeah, oh, LD, wow. thanks for the super chat and, and thanks for the question. The answer ranges from nothing, sorry, to maybe uh, uh, quite a bit of something. So if you don't know what a proper human diet is, uh, watch my videos. I think I actually have a YouTube video about uh, tinnitus or tinnitus. If, it's, if the majority of your symptoms are caused by inflammation in the inner ear, you may get glorious relief of your pulsatile tinnitus from a proper human diet. If it's, if it's just from the slap in the ear and the trauma that that caused and there's no inflammation, then you may be stuck with that for life. Oh, that's awful news. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Karen says, ready? What does it mean if you crave salt? And I mean, literally pour it in my hand and eat it mm -hmm. out of my palm. It means one of two things. It means either you're not eating enough salt because salt is a required nutrient for proper and optimal human function. Secondly, it might mean that you're deficient in another mineral and your body is just uh, voicing that by thinking that it's, it, it's craving salt when really you're craving manganese or cobalt or iodine or something else. So uh, if you're eating just a stupid amount of salt because of this craving, I would get a mineral supplement like uh, Keto Chow's Daily Minerals and see if that didn't help that craving. But if you've been trying to limit your salt, oh, I don't want to eat salt, then that's basically your body saying, hey, dummy, you need to eat some salt. It's required for pro proper function. Um, Ryan says, a very well-known carnivore guru that you've had conversations with is talking about eating honey, tons of seasonal fruits, and saying carnivore is not sustainable <clears throat> long-term because of electrolyte issues. Yeah. So this uh, Ryan is talking about my good friend, Dr. Paul Saladino, uh, we're all searching, trying to uncover the proper human diet. And I, I, uh, kudos for, for Dr. Saladino. If, if he thinks he's found additional information, uh, our ancestors since the beginning of time have always eaten fruit when it was ripe in season. No doubt about that. And we've always eaten honey every time we found a honey tree. No doubt about that. But that those things happen rarely. The fruit is ripe for maybe one month out of the year in most latitudes. And uh, just because if you found a honey tree every day, you might not eat honey every day because you didn't want to get 100 stings to get the honey. So, But I, I, I agree with him in one respect. If you're going to eat carbohydrates... For some of us, remember the bell curve I talked about, some of us will have less inflammation if we do eat fruits instead of vegetables that the plant actually intended for us to eat. That's why plants make fruits is so that something will eat the fruit and then poop out the seeds somewhere else or just drop the seeds, right? So they don't put toxins <clears throat> in the fruits like they do in the stalks and the, in the seeds and in the, the leaves. So for some of us, Eating our 20 grams of carbs a day might be better in the form of fruits. Others of us, that's going to that's gonna spike our blood sugar way too high. You want to hear my two I cents? I do, yes. Okay, here's my two cents. <coughs> in a world where we were scavengers and we did that type of thing, what didn't exist? 
metabolic disease, type 2 diabetes, all the problems that we're trying to fight. That's a very good point. Right that now. wasn't really a thing then. We were trying to survive, you know, being ran out, to starved to death, run over by a woolly mammoth, those type of things. In the world we're living in, focusing on eating protein, good quality fats, those type of things, as opposed to eating ancestral. We're not living in the same world. Our bodies are sick because we've been eating cereals, bagels, lots of fruit, lots, lots of bananas and bananas. green grapes. You know, yeah. the big green grapes. Right? And so I, well, I think that it is ancestral appropriate to eat that way. I don't think that for most of us, it's beneficial to eat yeah. in that way. Especially if you're on your journey <clears throat> towards metabolic health. Now, after you've attained metabolic health and you have a normal A1C, a normal C-peptide, and normal markers of inflammation, then you might be able to add back in some fruit and some occasional honey. But I don't think in any world is eating a, a large amount of honey every day. That's that's not going to lead to metabolic health in the long term. That's just my opinion. No, uh, uh, wisdom coming from the right of me. <laughs> Tammy, thank you. Hi, a diabetic friend started carnivore three weeks ago. Should he stop his diabetic meds? His, his doc isn't supportive of his diet. He needs to find a new doctor. Yeah, he's a, he needs to anything. find a doc that understands low carb. Now, I've got a video on my YouTube channel called How to Find a Low Carb Doctor uh, Near You, something like that. And even in the some of the, the websites where you can type in your zip code, uh, there are actually doctors in Australia who understand this. Did I just make up she's from Australia? Yes. Why did I think that? I don't okay. Know. Uh, so wherever, <laughs> I don't know. Wherever you are in the world, Tammy, there, there's a low carb doc somewhere. It may be a two hour drive, but I promise you there's one because he's good. Your, your husband, friend, diabetic friend, uh, needs to monitor his or her, his uh, blood sugars closely because if they're still running high, it's not time to stop the medicine yet. Once they start running normal and he starts to have symptoms of low blood sugar and his blood sugar gets lower than it should be, that's when it's time to start talk, uh, stopping the diabetic medications. But he needs to have a conversation with a doctor who understands low carb uh, and, and maybe go back and say, OK, I'm not going to do carnivore. I'm going to do a very, very low carbohydrate diet. Maybe that'll make your doctor happy and then your doctor will work with him. And you don't have to mention the fact that your low, low carbohydrate diet is going to consist only of meat. <clears throat> Diplomacy. Nancy, I didn't say there were no diseases back then. I said that they were metabolic diseases weren't a thing yeah, that we were concerned about because yeah. we were I, more concerned about not starving to yeah, death. Yeah, I think <laughs> I think that no paleoanthropologist on the planet, Nancy, would tell you that type 2 diabetes existed back then. Yeah, that, or that morbid obesity or no fatty diseases. liver. That's the diseases right. we're talking about yeah. here, Nancy. Thank you Very for that. Very specific diseases. Ooh, yeah. Ursula. Is duck liver mousse good for us? 100%. Eat, Eat it, it up. every day. Eat it up. Yes. Uh, Graham, is there a reason keto would work better than carnivore? That's a good question. Uh, I don't know of a reason. Uh, it might, for me personally, carnivore is the way for me. I think that some people love their veg a lot. I like some veg, but I don't love it. And that therefore it's more sustainable for them. It's more, they can do it longer term because they get to have their, their veg. Uh, but I don't know of a medical reason. Um, some people feel like that they get a lot of electrolytes when they eat uh, green veg. And so there, you may not have to worry about your electrolytes as much if you're adding some green veg to your diet, but I, I feel like it's not an issue for most people. Ashley says my, <coughs> Six-year-old has asthma. Would he benefit from keto or carnivore? Yeah, actually, <clears throat> there's quite a bit of research on this, not in kids, but in adult people with asthma. Their asthma gets substantially better when you get rid of the sugars and the grains and the vegetable oils. And so he could still eat carbohydrates. He could still eat his veg that he likes. He could eat some berries, um, but just get rid of the sugar, the grains, and the industrial Vegetable oils. And I think you're going to notice that his asthma gets noticeably better. And I think I have a video on my YouTube channel about asthma. Joel's teeth. This bench hurts my butt. Oh, 
I was just diagnosed with a GFR of 50.5. I'm really scared. Is it possible to remedy this? Yeah. My PCP couldn't care less. <laughs> so you did lose some weight. That's good. Yeah. So a lot of people with stage one, stage two, and even stage three chronic kidney disease have been able to reverse their kidney damage up, up to one full stage. And so somebody in stage two, a year after eating a proper human diet, they're back to stage one. And we've, uh, Dr. Jason Fung, a friend of mine who is a kidney specialist, uh, recommends keto and fasting for people with chronic kidney disease. And so, yeah, I think that there's every hope that it, it first of all, what you want to stop is it getting worse with time. And that's going to come with too many carbohydrates, too much sugar, too many grains, too many vegetable oils. And so if you could just stop it right there and it never got any worse, that's not really bad at all. But what I would like for you within a year is that it would be even better. Um, Deanna says, what about men's enlarged prostate? What is the culprit? Is it from sugar? It's partly from the inflammation and the high insulin caused from eating vegetable oils and eating grains and sugars. Uh, a lot of men notice that when they get dairy almost completely out of their diet, along with getting the sugars and grains and vegetable oils out of their diet, that their prostate symptoms just go completely away. I've had hundreds of men reach out to me in the comments of my YouTube videos and say, yeah, you know, I, it got better on keto, my, my enlarged prostate symptoms. But then when I did a month with no cheese, it got way better. And so this is another one of those instances where for some of us, the cheese is probably not our friend. Um, empower. <clears throat> Do you think protein should be limited for polycystic kidney disease patients? I lost 160 pounds on keto and I just got diagnosed. Yeah, there's no research that I'm aware of uh, that people with polycystic kidney need to limit their protein. Now, your doctor may tell you that, your nephrologist may tell you that, but I want you to say, okay, doc, could you print me out the research that proves that? Because I don't think they'll be able to find any. If they do find some, then send it to me because I've looked and looked and I cannot find any research. What you definitely want to uh, minimize and avoid is too many carbohydrates with poly polycystic kidney. Definitely the sugars and grains. Thanks for the super chat. That was cute. Says go. go. <laughs> um, San Suru. I've been ketovore for four months and have had great results. My blood ketone levels have been on the high side, five plus. Is that a cause for concern? My glucose is normal and my BMI is 20. No, no cause for concern at all. Remember the bell curve I've talked about seven times now. Some of us, like me, my ketones, if I get a 0.5, I'm jumping up and down for joy, which I don't, I don't monitor it every day, but when I do check. Nisha, on the other hand, can fast for 30 minutes and have ketone level of four. And it's just the, <laughs> it's the, the difference in the, the individuality of each of us. But as long as you're feeling great, looking great and getting healthier, it's fine from 0.5 to 5. It doesn't matter. Uh, Thanks, Sherry, uh, for the super chat. Choo, 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 choo. Oh, Susan, shout out to Susan. Just a quick thank you. I lost 90 pounds on Keto Carnivore and kept it off <laughs> for five months. Now. That's what I'm talking well about. Done, That's Susan. what I'm talking about. And I hope you're teaching all your friends and family how to do this. Uh, Mary, during pregnancy and breastfeeding, do you recommend any type of fasting schedule? No. No. There's no uh, reason yeah. to do that. And when you're hungry, eat. When you're pregnant and breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. I get that question a lot. Yay, Susan. Yeah, give Susan some love. Um, Mary, is beet juice no. good for high blood pressure? Have you no. heard that before? Yeah, there's oh, all these okay. things. All this, this juice, celery juice, this juice. No, there's no magic in any fruit juice or any vegetable juice that is going to help blood pressure in any meaningful way. Now, there may be a tiny study out there that showed that it lowered it two or three points. But if you're wanting, if you're wanting to substantially lower your blood pressure or your blood sugar, then you're going to stay away from beet juice because it's super high in sugar. Sebastian. That was almost Beckett's name. He vetoed it. Sebastian. Sebastian. I was going to call him Bastion. No, I'm just kidding. We both were like, too much. <laughs> That's too, too much. much. I really love that name. 
What mates do you eat in a day to keep the fat percentage high enough not to get rabid starvation? Yeah. So I'll, I always eat a fatty cut of meat, whether that's a pork steak or a, a ribeye or beef ribs, pork ribs. I'll add uh, the yolk from two or three eggs. Sometimes I mix that with my zero carb mustard. So it just looks like mustard, but there's three egg yolks in it. That ups my fat quite a bit. I'll add butter to the top on, on meat very often. I'll cook my meat in bacon grease. Uh, how else do I get more fat? Fatty so, cuts of meat. Yeah, yeah. Just buy the fattiest cuts you can get. In. And if you have a butcher, an actual meat person that you can say, look, I like fat. I don't want you to trim my meat. Often they're throwing your fat away and you don't even know it. We get looked at so weird when people we ask for fatty cuts and don't trim this and don't cut the fat off. They're like, really? Yeah. Yeah. When we were on the low carb cruise, they had the big roast beef thing, you know, where the chef sliced off your piece. And in the front, there was this huge mound of fatty cuts. And so when I walked by, he said, he was like, you, you want some roast beef? And I said, yes. And I just took my fork and raked the, the fatty cuts off into my plate and took off. And he was like, he thought I was going to die. Um, Carrie says she eats butter when she gets hungry. Yeah, yeah. salty butter is is great for turning off the cravings when you get hungry. Salt, salty, like extra salt on the yep. butter, not yep. just salted butter. Yep, right? yep. I'll just take some Redmond's real salt and, and sprinkle it over a, a a fork full of butter, and that just knocks my hunger out for hours. That's a good question from Betsy. I've heard people say if you eat too much fat, you won't burn your body fat. What are your thoughts? I know what they're trying to, what they're trying to say here, Betsy, and theoretically they're right because you do have to burn the fat you eat before you burn the fat on your booty or your belly or wherever your fat is. But when you you got to remember when you eat fatty meat, you're actually raising your metabolic rate, so you're going to burn more energy than if you didn't eat fatty meat. Uh, also. Many people are not satisfied or satiated by eating lean meat like skinless chicken breast. Uh, it, you can't eat enough to get full without the fat. And then finally, I would say ancestrally, anytime we ate fat in the wild, the fat, that, the, the meat that we wanted, it was fatty meat. That's what we got. We, we shot the biggest, fattiest animal. We chased it down. We stabbed it. We jumped on top of it, whatever Rambo style. But we always picked the fattiest ram the fattiest lamb the fattiest whatever we could get because that's 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 the proper human diet is there science behind that well for some people it seems like protein is is the most satiating macronutrient mm -hmm. for others of us like for me i've got to have fat or i'm just not going to be full i'll be looking and so both protein and fat as macronutrients are very satisfying and satiating but I think the combination just makes the most ancestral sense. And then also, we how many people do we know? How many thousands of people have told us they've lost 70, 80, 90, 110 pounds eating the fattiest cuts of stuff that they could get? And so if it were just, oh, if you eat fat, you won't burn fat, then these people wouldn't have these stories to tell. Island Boy says, I've read conflicting things. Should you eat as much as you want on carnivore or should you count calories and fast to both heal and lose weight? Um, I don't know any reputable carnivore authority out there who recommends calorie counting. I don't, I don't know anybody who even mentions calories. Eat fatty meat to your full. And then if you want to do some fasting for autophagy and to help other things to heal, I think that's wonderful. You can do that. But worrying about your calorie intake, is that's always busy work, and it's never productive. <clears throat> Bill says, can you please comment on APOE4? My cardio recommended Dr. Iselstein's <clears throat> forks, over, forks over knives. So I went from 20 carb keto to 230, 300 gram vegan yeah. dietary. APOE4 is something that, <clears throat> that vegan vegans love to talk about. I think it's one of those bullcrap markers that, that 10 years from now we'll look back and laugh <clears throat> that we even worried about it or checked it at all. Uh, there are other labs that are vitally important for optimal metabolic health. And I talk about those on my YouTube videos. 
the ones I talk about on my videos, those are the ones that I really feel like are actually important for long-term health. How to raise your iron levels, Doreen. Uh, eat lots of red meat and eat lots of liver. And that's it. What if you're pregnant? Eat lots of red meat and lots of <clears throat> liver. Yeah, but it's okay. So I was anemic when I was pregnant too. And I, I mean, I still had to supplement a little bit. Yeah. And some, if you're pregnant, you may have to supplement, especially if you have the meat aversion. That's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You may have to supplement for a while. But if you're not pregnant, you need to be eating your red meat liver. <laughs> Oh, I hear somebody coming. Hello. <laughs> Did you see that side eye? Hello, baby Beckett. They can't see you very well tonight. Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> you want some water? Yeah. You want some water? You bring me a straw there in that. Did you see what he just thing. did? He just told us he wants some water. So we're going to give him some water. Say hi to Granny Barry. Hold him up a little. Can't see him. You can't see him anyways. We're blurry. I'm trying to. Say hi, Granny. Hey, baby. Here's your go go go. Why does it keep? I'm sorry, June. I'm trying to show. There we go. There's Baby Beckett. Say hi, Granny Bear. We got that little cup for him at Disney. It's the best money we ever spent. He loves it. Show him your. Show him your go go. He's busy. He's busy drinking, drinking because go -go. he's thirsty. See, he hasn't learned that he has to drink his body weight every day in water. He just drinks when he's thirsty. You done? No. No. More? No. No. That's okay. it. He's done. So that's how much water a baby should drink. Well, at this moment. Yeah, at this moment. That's He'll right. He'll drink some more like. Yeah. Where are you going? Uh, Catholic mama, we already talked about nursing and fasting. We don't recommend that you do any kind of fasting uh, other than the fasting you do while you're asleep, while you're, while you're nursing or while you're pregnant. Beckett's gone. He's back to the <clears throat> toy room. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <clears throat> Let's see. What else we got? Wendy, get that one right there. Are exogenous ketones okay? Um, it depends on what your, your definition of the word okay is. They are completely and totally unnecessary if you're using keto or carnivore for weight loss or for reversing type 2 diabetes or fatty liver or uh, improving your high blood pressure. You don't need them at all. They're a waste of money. Now, if you have a very young child with autism or ADD who just won't eat keto or carnivore, then you can use that medicinally to give them the ketones their brain needs for proper development and function. If you have a very, very old relative who has dementia, Alzheimer's, Huntington, something like that, and they just refuse to eat keto because they want their toast and jam and, and uh, tea with sugar in it, then you can, you can spike their foods with exogenous ketones to give their brain the ketones to burn for energy because their, their brain just can't burn the glucose anymore. But for the, those of us in the middle, complete waste of money. Sean, I have Crohn's and I'm doing well on Ketovore since September of 2020. Recent um, calprotectin store result was 803 micrograms. What more can I do to decrease my inflammation? <laughs> Well, with Crohn's, you might consider going completely carnivore. And with, uh, and it may even need to be a no-cheese carnivore with your only dairy being butter and ghee in order to get the inflammation down. Some people with Crohn's, with ulcerative colitis, uh, with IBS, do perfectly on keto or ketovore. Some of those, some of you guys have to go completely carnivore to get complete remission and complete uh, reversal of the inflammation. Natalie says, do you cook enough for a few days at once or cook every day? Do you eat together or just when you're hungry? If we had to meal prep in this house, nobody would eat. Yeah. So, no, we no. don't prep ahead of time. <clears throat> we fix things throughout the day and at least once or twice a week, you know, once we're settled in a house, we sit down together and eat. Yeah. But for the most part, yeah. I eat when I'm hungry. He eats when he's hungry. Beckett eats when he's hungry. And then every now and then we'll have like a meal yeah. on Sunday together. And we'll go to Nisha's parents house and we'll actually yeah. all sit down and have a meal together but especially the first meal of the day i feel like that's very individualized for different people yeah, beckett now, eats first thing in the morning yeah beckett has to have bacon and eggs first thing in the morning and he's a growing infant and that's part of the proper human diet so I'm, i think that's perfectly appropriate i however am not trying to grow i'm done growing 
and you feel the same way, you might want to get a little taller. But yeah, and I'm just not hungry. And so I sip on some black coffee or some sparkling water, and I usually don't break my fast until 2, 2. p.m. ish. Yeah. And when do you normally break yours? Depends on the time of the month. You're a little before me, I think. Usually, well, you, if like before noon. like normal, I, it's usually around noon. But then when I'm on my cycle, I don't eat sometimes till four or five. I don't know why. Isn't that weird? Not, you I would think agree. it would be the opposite, but yeah. I just don't. <clears throat> not a stone. Um, Hamid says keto on prostitutes, proctitis, proctitis. So far, forty days constipated. Nothing is working. Only once in a week. Is there a plan? Yeah, Muhammad, I would I would definitely try uh, with proctitis. I would try a month of just fatty meat carnivore and with no cheese, the only dairy being butter and ghee. Uh, many people with colon complaints and itises like proctitis notice that their constipation goes completely away on a carnivore diet. Once you've got the proctitis calmed down, then you can start to add back in one vegetable at a time to see if that is what was causing the inflammation and causing you to have constipation. All right. Oh, gosh. Nah says bacon and pork sausage. The good, the bad, and the ugly, please. Yeah. What say you? So don't worry about the nitrates and the nitrides. That's a that's a baloney myth that I talk about in, in YouTube videos on my channel. Uh, if you're going to eat sausage, I think it's perfectly fine. But always read the label, read the nutrition facts, and make sure it's a, a very low carbohydrate, total carbs. Usually, if, if sausage has got more than one gram of carbohydrate per serving, it's got too much sugar. But you can look and find them. And the reason I love sausage <clears throat> is that very often the manufacturers think they're tricking us because they'll, they'll put organ meat in the sausage. They'll put liver and kidney and all kinds of other stuff, thinking that they're pulling a fast one on us because they're, they're getting to sell the organs at sausage prices. But what they don't know is that carnivores like me and hopefully like you – we want to eat organs. And so we're happy that they put those in the sausage. So yeah, bacon and sausage are part of a proper human diet. They're good for you. There's nothing bad about them. Just watch the total carbohydrate count. I'm starving now. Every time we do these, we talk about food and I know <laughs> you get hungry. I'm hungry. <laughs> You've raised your insulin just talking about mm, food. Yeah, That's okay. I could do it for some insulin right now yeah Lori. many sausages have sugar and but they won't taste sweet and so you if you're going to eat anything that's ground up regardless of what it is whether it's meat or veg or whatever you got to read the ingredients and look for the, the sugar sarah says will your family be enjoying corned beef this wednesday is that a thing st patrick's day you eat corned beef on st patrick's day huh i don't think i don't think we ever did that we as in who? Like when I was growing up. Oh, you didn't have that at school? Well, if I did, I didn't eat it because back then I would not touch I'll, corned beef. Yeah, I'll make but, some corned beef. Yeah, now I would I would eat some corned beef. Yeah. Keto fight? Because I think typically doesn't it have corn? Well, they think, I think they and usually, it, it has potatoes in like the can you buy in the can. But I, I mean. think you can make corned beef. Corn doesn't actually mean it has corn in it. That's an old English term I forgot. I've read about this before. But it's just a way of... of processing it and preparing it but yeah heck yeah i'd eat some corned beef corned beef and cabbage is what yeah. I, I, it comes to mind but i know <clears> the, <throat> the cans have more stuff in them sometimes yeah they have potatoes to yeah, take up space I'm so it's cheaper totally eating that thank you for reminding me yeah that was coming up uh american gypsy i have a 13 year old who's overweight they were diagnosed with type 2 on metformin, but I changed his diet to carnivore and numbers are good. His blood sugar was too low tonight. I didn't give him the metformin. I need it. Bye. Yeah, it's okay. American Gypsy, listen carefully. It's probably time to, to stop the metformin, but you are not going to stop any prescription medication until you consult his doctor. Primary care physician. That's right. That's that's very important. Uh, but if, if, you, if you tell your primary care doctor, look, his blood sugar was 57 and he felt nauseated, your doctor's going to say, yeah, stop that pill. If your doctor doesn't say that, then that's weird. But yeah, it's probably time to stop the pill. Again, great job, by the way. And uh, do not, since he's still a growing teenager, you're not going to limit portion size. You're not going to say, oh, you've eaten enough. He's going to eat fatty meat until he is stuffed. 
And that is, that's the way he's going to continue to grow without continuing to grow. Make sense? <clears throat> yes, Cynthia, you're right. Corned beef hash is the one that has potatoes in it. Corned that's what you buy in the can. Yeah. Cabbage. And I used to love that, that hash, oh, man. man. Back I in the day. I some corned beef hash. Uh -huh. yeah. Sylvia says, if I have anything with artificial sweeteners in it, I get boils that end up with me in the hospital, yep. drained and packed, even sweeteners that is said to be all natural, mm -hmm. but my body says no. Yep. What do I do? Sylvia, you avoid all, all sweeteners. There there and remember the bell curve. That's nine times now, right? Some people can eat artificial sweeteners all day long and have no problem whatsoever. Other people are like you. If they look at artificial sweetener, they got a medical issue. They got inflammation. They got some kind of issue going on. You're just going to have to, I mean, unless you want boils all the time, you're going to have to avoid the sweeteners. Tanya says, <clears throat> I've been more carnivore lately. However, I'm having increased blood pressure readings. I tend to eat two grass-fed burger patties and eggs, what would cause my blood pressure to be elevated? I'd love to know what your numbers are, Tanya, but uh, more than likely your blood pressure cuff is, uh, you may have lost enough weight that now your cuff is too big for your arm. That can give you a, a false reading. Secondly, make sure that you, you follow the advice I gave earlier. You're going to sit quietly for 20 minutes because it may be that you're in a more stressful part of your life right now than you were back when they were better. Relax, meditate, dark room for 20 minutes, then check the blood pressure. If it's still running high, you need to talk to your primary care doctor. Almost everybody can get off blood pressure medications with keto or carnivore, but there are there's a there's a subset of us back on that bell curve again, who it seems like we're gonna wind up taking a low dose of a blood pressure pill, regardless of whether we're eating a proper human diet. And then if you go back to eating this the crap diet, you'll be you'll be on four blood pressure medications. So I would much rather be on a low dose of one than having to take a handful of blood pressure pills. Declan, who um, I presume is Irish, says Declan. corns are large salt crystals and it's traditional to eat corned beef in Ireland for Patty's Day, not Patty's Day. Yeah. Uh, also, um, Cole Cannon. Cole Cannon. But that one has potential. Maybe that's what we call corned beef hash here. Maybe. Yeah. Thanks for the thanks info. For the, I knew yeah. it was somehow in the way it was prepared, but I, I couldn't remember Declan. Thank you for that. Interesting. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> that is oh, it. Get that one. Okay. Yeah. Read it. That's oh, important. You didn't mean to Click read it. it. Calm down. Michelle. Michelle says it's carnivore safe for type 2 diabetes, fatty liver, and high blood pressure. Thank you. Your baby yes. is adorable. God oh, bless. thank you for the super chat, Michelle. Carnivore is the best way that you're going to reverse type 2 diabetes, fatty liver, and high blood pressure. Keto will do it too. Carnivore is going to do it faster. Carnivore is completely safe if you have type 2 diabetes, fatty liver, and or high blood pressure. Carnivore is also going, going to reverse all three of those conditions. Uh Type 2 diabetes completely reverse it. Fatty liver completely reverse it. High blood pressure at least partially reverse it, if not completely reverse it. So 100% carnivore for the win for you, Michelle Val E. Thank you for the super chat. Uh, we're going to say good night to Granny Berry if you're still watching. Good night, Granny. Regina we'll come see you soon. And Bob. We miss you guys. We'll see you soon. Yep. Yeah. If you, I hope they saw Beckett. If not, you can go back and watch this on the replay. He was really cute tonight. Thanks for hanging out with us. We're really sorry about the internet situation. Yeah. It's just. We're working on it. Living in the backwoods. Yeah. If we, you know anybody <laughs> who works at HughesNet, maybe elbow them in the ribs or something. I don't know. Thanks for the super chat. Thanks for the stars. And thanks to our patrons on Patreon who have been supporting us for a very, very, very long time. And we'll see you guys tomorrow in our private Facebook group for Tribe Tuesday. That's it. See you tomorrow at six if you're in the tribe. It's really awkward right now. Why? Tribe. I don't know. I tried to sound excited about it, but it was like, I would keep thinking how blurry we are and how nothing actually is coming across the way that I'm like yeah. no facial expression. So like you I know? could be doing this. You know, and yeah. Nobody could tell. Yeah. I feel That's like sad. I'm making faces, but yeah. it doesn't Because I've been matter. sucking my gut in this whole time <laughs> trying to be really, nobody could even tell. They couldn't even appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, oh well. good Maybe questions tonight. Yeah, guys, thanks a thank lot, guys. You. Feel free to share this video if you think it'll help somebody. 
uh, reverse a chronic medical condition that they thought was chronic and progressive. See you next week. Bye. Click the button quick. I clicked it. Nothing happened. Why is it doing this? Because...